During the Great Migration between 1916 and 1970, six million black people left the South for the North and West. Since then, black people have been reversing that trend with about 60% now living in the South, according to the Brookings Institution. But in recent decades, some African Americans who left the Northern cities, their, their elders migrated to for the South, now say they're not sure that they found the black meccas that they were looking for. Interviewing several African Americans who moved to Georgia, North Carolina, and Texas, the Washington Post found that they moved South either with a new job already in hand or with hope that they could find work in some of the nation's fastest growing cities. Many also moved in search of affordable housing that could help their families build the kind of intergenerational wealth their parents and grandparents in the North were locked out of. They all found that racism existed in both the North and South, but for some, the larger concentrations of black people in the South provided additional safety. In all cases, they moved in search of something better. But looking back, none felt like they'd found the promised land, at least not yet. Joining me now to discuss is the race and ethnicity reporter at the Washington Post, Emmanuel Felton. Emmanuel, it's a fascinating story. I, I, I'm, very, I'm very interested around in this question around whether or not people moving to find Mecca uh, or, or to, you know, uh, to find a perfect situation rather than to find a better situation. What, what did you find in the conversation you had with the people that you interviewed? Yeah, I think, you know, people know it's, it, I think like what really got me interested in this topic was an early on conversation I had where one of the interviewees said, it's difficult to be black anywhere in America. I might as well do it around other black people. And so I found that idea really interesting. I don't think anyone thought necessarily, you know, I think for for a while, a place like Atlanta was sold as this could be it. This could be the black Mecca. And I think, you know, there are people who made that move from, from Chicago, from New York to, to Atlanta, to Houston, to Dallas. And I think in a lot of ways, their their lives improved. But I think you know, and in a lot of ways, they found that there's some of the same, you know, <laughs> the, you know, the idea that this Mason, the Mason Dixon line is at Canada, I think was, was really pervasive across all these conversations and that like, America is pretty much the same. The question is, where can my individual family get, get ahead right now? So what is the trend uh, right now? Is it, is it picking up? Is it steady? Uh, a, a trickle, a stream, a flood. Can, give us some sense of the numbers yeah. around what the reverse migration looks like. So I won't say it's necessarily picking up, but what we do see is that it's, it's steady. It hasn't dropped off. So we're seeing that these trends that started in the 90s of Black people leaving uh, the Bay Area, leaving Los Angeles, leaving Chicago, leaving New York, it's just not, is not held up or is not changed at all, has not you know, lessened. So what that means over time is that um, these 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 regions are just incredible. Like the 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 loss of black population is becoming really noticeable at this point. I think you know you think about a movie like The Last Black Man of San Francisco. Like this is in our zeitgeist now that there is there is a noticeable lack of black people in these cities that were once the you know you know the the hope for for black America for for people fleeing the Jim Crow South. So what does this mean in terms of kind of municipal power and state power for black people. They're leaving cities that they had large, large populations and, and in some cases, large majorities in, uh, and they're leaving the, the, that kind of power base going to cities in the South where, you know, a lot of Southern cities uh, have majority black populations. But we're also seeing in some of these cities, people are moving to I'm in Atlanta, the Atlanta area, but not into Atlanta proper, mm -hmm. right? So this last census, I think, was the first time that the black population of Atlanta dropped below 50% since 1970. So what, what is the, you know, how do, you, how do we categorize how that movement is working out and what it means for municipal and state power? Yeah, I think we're, we're still seeing that in play. I think, like, you know, this is a long-term issue for Black folks, right? I, I think a lot about this researcher I talked to in East St. Louis, Illinois, uh, when I was doing a story there a few years ago, and he talked about, like, the hollow prize that it was when Black folks finally got control of East St. Louis, which is now, like, the, the 
largest, you know, almost virtually black city in the country. Uh, but what happened once they gained power of the city, you see this in Gary, you see this in Detroit, is that what was left of the city was our, was not much, right? Like the industrial base had collapsed, the tax base had collapsed, um, you know, a lot of the philanthropic support for, for, for the, the institutions of the city had already left. And so, you know, black people are leaving in a lot of cases. You know, like, so at one end, we see black people leaving gentrifying cities like New York, where, you know, you're being priced out. But also we see a, a huge black exodus out of places like St. Louis, Detroit, Cleveland, not necessarily driven by um, gentrification in that case, but driven by this idea that these cities that we were, you know, there have been black mayors of haven't been given the tools to really succeed. Um, and so we are going to see a shift in, like, what the politics of those cities will look like. Whereas, you know, I think the question then becomes, and I think, you know, I, and I've seen you talk about this a little bit in your writing, it's like, there's this lag time, right? So like, we see that the South is changing. Um, we see that, you know, with the win in Georgia for Biden and the two Senate seats, um, and then, you know, in North Carolina, it's becoming, you know, it goes back and forth, but it's relatively a competitive state now. Um, and uh, yeah, and you, so you Texas as well, right? So we, we're seeing that, but we're seeing that there is there is this lag time, and that's going to be a challenge for Democrats, right? Like, so there are the the traditional Democratic states in the Midwest where vo white voters are getting a whole lot more conservative, and black voters are leaving, and they're going south. But you know, like the question is like who 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 gets that balance right during every presidential and gubernatorial 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 election um, is sort of the question right. for and politics. What, what and what kind of people are, are leaving? I I once spoke to someone in Chicago, and he was, it was when they were having protests, and he was talking about uh, it was the middle class that had left, in his estimation, and that had created this really uh, problematic situation where you had wealthy black people and you had very poor black people, and the middle class, which was the glue for the community, had basically left uh, or was continuing to leave the city, and that was creating a problem for the city. Is that your sense of the kinds of people who are engaged in the reverse migration, or are there other people engaged in it? You know, it's tough, right? The census data isn't good enough. That that was one of my main questions, too, because you hear that a lot in the North, this idea of the hollowing out of the Black middle class. I will say a lot of the people I talked to were Black middle class folks, right? Um, or like, you know, slightly upper and slightly lower middle class. And I think a part of it is sort of like what happened with the Great Migration. I mean, and, you know, there was a broad base of economic, uh, you know, strat like stratification of people who left the South, but like it was the strivers who left. It was people who like are willing to leave your home and willing to leave comfort and, and try to make it a, a go of it somewhere else. And that by definition tends to be a little, you know, more affluent, I think. Right. Emmanuel Felton, thank you so much for joining us tonight. It's a very illuminating conversation.